This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Therapy isn't for when you're at rock bottom. It can help you avoid hitting rock bottom. Life can be hard, but having tools to cope will help when the curveballs are thrown your way. Visit betterhelp.com super and learn the tools to help you navigate when things get hard. Hey, brother. Okay, guys, it is chilly outside. Probably one of the worst times of the year to get into like a frozen ice bath, but <laughs> more on that later. Instead, it is the perfect time of year to dig back into the wonderful world of frozen Frozen, and specifically everyone's favorite ice harvester, reindeer herder, Kristoff. One of the details about Kristoff that felt like it was going to hold massive importance for this franchise is where did Kristoff come from? The movie opens with one of my all time favorite frozen scenes, just this group of men harvesting ice from this frozen lake somewhere in Norway. Na, 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 hey, ya, ya. Ah, 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 ah. Me. And while the men are doing their work, they keep cutting away to a young Kristoff and Sven who are, you know, sort of helping. But how Kristoff became affiliated with this group at all remains a mystery even today. Like they're not really in anyone's way, they're not really bothering anybody, but they also don't really super feel like part of the team or like Kristoff is, you know, someone there's son. Certainly no one looks like they're looking after him and they do have their own sled and they leave by themselves. And then after the song is over, we never see the ice harvesters again. Just Kristoff off on his own, who has now been adopted by the trolls. I'm gonna keep you. Kristoff even tells Anna at one point. When I was a kid, it was just me and Sven until they you know, kind of took us in. Interestingly though, with the introduction of Frozen 2, we learn a lot more about the magical surrounding land of Arendelle. And I think it gives us a pretty usable explanation for where Kristoff actually came from. Today we explore how the mist may have trapped most of the Northuldra in, but it also may have trapped some of them out. Okay, I know we've covered it before, but I never want to miss an opportunity to explore just how fascinating this opening ice harvesting scene really is. Because everything you're seeing in this opening number is like a very real thing that can happen in areas of the world with bodies of fresh water that also maintain cold enough temperatures to freeze thick layers of ice. Because if you think back to like before modern refrigeration, which isn't that old, there was otherwise no real way to keep stuff cold at other times of the year when it was hot outside. It means, and like, this is hard to fathom, like an ice cold beverage on a hot day was just non-existent. That is until people exactly like we see in Frozen realized you could harvest this ice, store it in sawdust and ship it all over the world. The ultimate luxury. Seriously though, no one drank ice beverages because you couldn't even fathom do it. It wasn't a thing. People had to be sold on it. There was like marketing campaigns. We actually made a whole video about this if you want to click the card. Anyway, ice harvesting aside, let's get back to the task at hand. We do know straight from the director of Frozen that Kristoff is indeed an orphan. And that pretty much fits with exactly what we see on screen. Kristoff seems to be allowed to work with and around these men, but he also doesn't really seem like he's part of the team. Like we said, he has his own sled, he leaves separately, and unlike the other men who are using horses, he has a reindeer. And the reason that is important is because the people in this part of the world that are known for raising and herding reindeer are the Sami, the indigenous people of Scandinavia. And sure enough, even back in Frozen 1, it's confirmed that Kristoff is supposed to represent a member of the Sami. But what's interesting is that as of Frozen 2, the Sami were given a much bigger backstory in this world in the form of the Northuldra. And that is where we're going to take this idea next, because I noticed almost immediately when we were first introduced introduced to the North Oldra, that they dressed very similar to Kristoff. Not to mention, he seems to have all of the exact same interests, especially with Ryder the Reindeer Herder, who literally also talks to reindeer. It's like you can actually hear what they're thinking. Yeah, and then you, you just you just say it. And then you just say it. Like it is clear that he has the same customs and traditions specifically around reindeer, but he also definitely has no idea who the North Alder people are to begin with. So like, how does that happen? Well, that is where the plot of Frozen 2 comes into play. We know from the various history lessons that we get in Frozen 2 that some 34 years prior to the start of the movie, there was a conflict between the Northaldra and the people of Arendelle that angered the spirits of the forest so much that it enveloped a mist around the forest, trapping everyone there inside. It prevented anyone at all from leaving the forest for 30 plus years until finally Elsa and 
Anna arrive in Frozen 2 to set the past straight. And this is like really tragic for all the people trapped inside, some of whom were born inside and have literally never left the mist or even possibly worse, the Arendellian guards who were trapped in there who had families on the outside that they could never see again. But one avenue I never really considered before now was whether or not there were North Uldra people outside the mist when the mist settled and who instead of getting trapped in, got trapped out. And this is what brings us to the edge of the theory. Basically that Kristoff's parents were those people, members of the North Uldra who were outside of the forest when the mist settled. And when they tried to come back, they found themselves locked out. This would explain why, so similar to the North Uldra, Kristoff is already working with reindeer at an extremely young age. In fact, the reindeer themselves might explain why his parents were away from the North Uldra to begin with. Because believe it or not, one of the most common practices of the Sami people is reindeer herd migration, an event that specifically takes place in the summer to allow reindeer to graze on lands that are otherwise typically covered by all the snow during the winter. And you can see pretty clearly based on the weather in the forest when the conflict happens that it's summer and not winter. So it's pretty likely that this group of people who we know to herd reindeer had a few people out, you know, managing the migration. All right, guys, and now we need to pause real quick to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, MeUndies. Truth bomb, you guys. Despite what you might have picked out for anyone else, everyone knows there's no better gift for the holidays than a brand new set of undies. Am I right? You know I'm right, and I'm not afraid to say it, and neither is today's sponsor, MeUndies. Because MeUndies is your go-to spot for all the snugly warm undies that your entire family will adore. In fact, I am, yeah, I'm literally wearing them right now. But what's great for the holidays is that you and your family can all get cozy in matching sets with limited edition holiday prints. Seriously, MeUndies makes the holiday spirit real. And you can try MeUndies by going to MeUndies.com slash theories for 20% off your first order plus free shipping and returns. But trust me, you're not gonna be returning them. I wear these things literally all year round. Like it doesn't matter what season it is, they're always making the best stuff. But in the winter, definitely like top tier. And let's face it, there's nothing better than waking up on Christmas morning and having matching sets of PJs for you and your entire family. Because not only will you be adorable and cute, but you'll also be insanely comfortable. So spend less time gifting and more time living with the new MeUndies holiday collection. From undies and bralettes to PJ sets, MeUndies has something for every name on your list. Shop classic plaids for dads, holiday sweater prints for fun friends, and the softest loungewear ever for all the cuddly ones in your life. Available in sizes XS through 4XL, MeUndies has everything you need to make your favorite people smile this holiday season, all in one convenient place, and maybe a little something for yourself too. This year, holiday your way with MeUndies. And again, you get 20% off your first order and free shipping and returns at a 100 100% satisfaction guarantee, head to MeUndies.com slash theories. One more time, MeUndies.com slash theories. Link is in the description down below. And it gets better. Here's actually a more official description of how reindeer migration works according to the World Wildlife Foundation. Each summer, hundreds of thousands of reindeers and their herders, known traditionally as Bozavazi, a word I'm positive I'm mispronouncing, start their annual migration down from higher elevations to lowland tundra in the far north of mainland Europe. The reindeer have spent the warmer months months feeding on sedges, herbs, and grasses, but as the weather cools, they head for more sheltered climates where there is less snowfall and they can dig for lichens and fungi with their hooves. Oh, lichens and fungi, you say? That is so interesting because it is the exact practice we hear described in the movie. We're heading west to the lichen meadows. You can come with us if you want. But here's where things get kind of sad because we know Kristoff was an orphan. So what must have happened is that while his parents were off managing the reindeer migration, the mist settled and they got locked out. This effectively locks them away from their entire community of people, meaning they have to rely on only themselves for survival. Now, the good news is they come from a fairly nomadic people to begin with, and they must have been fairly successful for a while because they would have had to have had Kristoff after the mist settled based on the timeline of the events of the movies. But eventually something must have gone wrong and they were no longer able to survive and left Kristoff orphaned alone in the wild with nothing but his pet baby reindeer. Thankfully, it seems like he at least found some acceptance with the men who were doing all the ice harvesting. Although it does have to be said, it doesn't seem like they go to much trouble to find him after he is later, you know, uh, adopted by the trolls. I'm gonna keep you. But even the fact that Kristoff finds sanctuary with the trolls fits pretty nicely with the Sami slash North Ultra upbringing. He's cool. Crazy. And this is because the Sami believe that all significant natural objects like plants, animals, and even rocks 
contain a soul. Which at least helps explain why he's willing and able to accept, you know, the rocks as his parents, like, right away. But what I found really interesting about this revelation is how much more it ties his story to Anna and Elsa's. Because when you watch Frozen the first time, Kristoff is of course great, but his run-in with the plot is pretty random. He just happens to be some ice guy who happens to be shopping at the same loot fiskery as Anna at the same time. I have a lot of quote of Lutefisk, so we have good feelings. Which is very lucky for Anna, but if indeed Kristoff's parents were trapped outside of the forest by the mist, and that is eventually what led to him being orphaned, then he, much like Anna and Elsa, was very directly affected by the decision of their grandfather to attack the North Older people in the first place. In fact, it arguably orphans all three of them, since going to resolve their conflict is what Anna and Elsa's parents are going to do when they die in Frozen one. King Runard sucked. But you really start to feel the reverberations of one guy's bad decision like echo through time. It almost makes it feel like the three of them were destined to me to resolve this conflict. Heck, I mean, at that rate, I guess it's also Elsa hitting Anna with the magic in the head on the night that she does that eventually leads Kristoff to follow them into the woods and get adopted by the trolls in the first place. Cuties. I'm gonna keep you. Which, coming back to the trolls, that leads us back to the only little possible bit of hope for Kristoff's otherwise very tragic childhood. Again, Kristoff specifically says it was just him and Sven when he was a kid, making it sound like he has almost no memory at all of his parents. But even that is kind of odd because he's roughly the same age as Anna and Elsa, so even if they died, you'd think he'd have some amount of recollection of them, right? Or maybe just some memory of them even talking about the North Urger people. They're people because he's supposed to be Sami and the North Urger people are the representation of Sami people in this universe. Like unless he was abandoned as a near infant, he should have some memory of them to speak of. And if he was abandoned when he was that little, then his odds of survival seem like they plummet because how is he gonna spend for himself as a little baby? So what gives Kristoff? Where are your memories? Well, I'll tell you what gives, the trolls. Because while we don't know the full extent of what the trolls are capable of, one of the absolute powers we know they possess is the ability to alter someone's memory. This is exactly how they save Anna's frozen head at the beginning of Frozen 1. And like, boy howdy, if there was ever someone in need of happier memories, I think it would be the little orphan boy who lost his parents out in the woods and never met the rest of his culture. But I say this is a bit of hope for Kristoff because it means that whatever actually happened to his parents may just be being obscured by the troll's magic. He may indeed believe them to be dead, but that might also just be how the trolls altered his memory to make his life a little happier. But on that note, there is one last detail that I think could tie everything together beautifully. Similar to Anna's memory wipe, we know that Grandpappy still leaves memories of things like Olaf, just not the fact that Elsa created him. It's only a tiny morsel of what actually happened, but it's still enough to trigger recognition for Anna when she meets Olaf all those years later. Olaf? Well, I imagine Kristoff is having a very similar situation. His family was away from the rest of the North Uldra when the mist settled. But having done the migration so many times before, they worked their way back to where the camp was supposed to be, or at least they tried to. But instead, they found themselves lost in the You think he made that harmony up on the spot? I don't think so. All right, guys, that's what happened to Kristoff's parents. Before I go, I mentioned uh, it being a bad time of year to get into an ice bath outside, and it is, but that is not going to stop me and Ben from doing exactly that later this week. This week's J vs. Ben is going to be frozen themed, and every time we get a question wrong, it'll mean we have to spend a longer time in an ice bath plunge tank. I am super duper not looking forward to it at all. But set a reminder. Hey guys, also real quick, we have just launched our annual SCB viewer survey. It's only like 10 questions long, it'll take you like less than a minute to do, but it really helps us determine like what kind of content we wanna make in 2023. So if you'd love to check that out, we would love for you to fill it out. There is a link in the description down below. Thanks so much. But guys, otherwise, thanks so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to like it and ding that bell so you don't miss any future Frozen action from us. If you want to learn more about ice harvesting, and I highly recommend it, it is a super interesting topic. You can check out this video right here. But otherwise, Ben, until next time, I will see you in another life, brother.